Okay, to wrap up our discussion of sampling in this last part, part three, we're going to look at some kind of real world examples of working with both audio signals and images. So here's the outline for the next few videos. We're gonna start off working in MATLAB with some audio signals, and we're going to look at both sampling those signals or downsampling those signals, and also quantizing the amplitude level of those signals. And then we'll also look at some images. We'll actually do some work in MATLAB and do similar things, but with images. So far, all the signals we've been talking about, I've been thinking of as signals as a function of time, kind of these one-dimensional time domain signals. But a lot of the things we've been talking about also apply to other types of signals, for instance, images. Images are a little bit different because they are not typically time domain signals, they're typically spatial signals in that they have coordinates, like an X coordinate and a Y coordinate to index the pixel. But a lot of the sampling and quantization concepts we've been uh, talking about map over to images as well. So we'll show some examples of that also. But first let's get into sampling audio. So first I need to say, since we're working on in MATLAB with an audio signal that I've loaded in MATLAB, even the original music file here that we've loaded obviously has to be a discrete time signal. You cannot load up a continuous time signal on a computer because there's an infinite number of values. So we're really not taking a continuous time signal and sampling it in this example. What we're doing is we're starting with an original music wave file that I have stored on disk, which by definition has been sampled and quantized. So that's our original file. And then we're going to manipulate that file. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing down sampling by two. So if you want, you can kind of think of this process as throwing away half the samples of the original signal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reconstruct or try to reconstruct the original wave file from the down sampled version of the signal. So start off with the blue curve, throw away half of the samples because I'm down sampling by two, I'm throwing away half. And then we're going to try to reconstruct the original curve with only half the samples by doing sync interpolation. So the process to go from the downsampled signal to the final signal that we're plotting right here, this red curve, is the process we've talked about. It's that sync interpolation process. What we're going to see is we're going to look at different versions of how much we're downsampling. Downsampled by two, by three, by four, and we'll see how that impacts the final reconstructed signal. What you can see right here is that the reconstructed signal in red and the original signal in blue look pretty similar. There's not a lot of difference here on this kind of large scale. If I zoom in a little bit, kind of the same thing here. For the most part, the red curve nicely tracks the blue curve. It's a little bit different, obviously. That's not surprising because we threw away half of the information. And then I tried to reconstruct the original signal. So obviously that's not going to work great, but it still looks fairly representative of the blue signal. And here there's obviously some pretty big differences. If, and, and keep in mind, now that I've reconstructed this signal, the number of samples in the red curve and the number of samples in the blue curve are exactly the same. I reconstructed it to have the exact same sample rate as my original signal, but due to the downsampling process, which involves using an anti-aliasing filter and then downsampling, we've lost some information. Obviously, there is a difference here if we subtract these two signals, which I can do in MATLAB easily just by subtracting those vectors. We see this black curve. I don't know that this gives you a lot of information, but obviously at every point in time, there is a difference between my original signal that I started with, the original um, wave file, and then the reconstructed signal that I formed having downsampled and then done sync interpolation. So there's obviously a difference. Perhaps the most interesting thing to look at is in the frequency domain. When I did the downsampling process and I knew I was gonna end up with half the samples because I was downsampling by two initially, the first thing I did was throw away the half of the frequency content with an anti-aliasing filter. So you can see right here my blue curve, which is my original spectrum, had a frequency, max frequency of around 5,500 hertz. Since I'm gonna downsample by two, I know that's effectively changing my sampling rate by a factor of two. So I need to get rid of these, otherwise when I down samples, they, they would alias back down here, and I don't like that. So I ran it through an anti-aliasing filter to get rid of that, and then I down sampled by two. So on the 
low frequencies, my sync interpolated spectrum, the red curve, and my original spectrum actually match quite well, and that's what I wanted to happen. I knew by lowering my sampling rate, I couldn't handle these frequencies anymore. So I purposefully discarded them, but, and now I can perfectly capture my original spectrum, but just not all of it. I can only do it up to FS over two, where FS is my new sampling rate. After I interpolate, now all of these frequencies are gone. The downsampling process completely got rid of that frequency content. So I'm not going to be able to perfectly reconstruct the signal. All right, that was downsampling by a factor of two. Let's keep going. Let's do three. Same sequence here. Not a lot different. If I zoom in here, you'll start noticing here as we downsample more and more, the red curve is going to match less and less because when I go and I do sync interpolation to reconstruct my music file, the amount of samples I had in this case was three times fewer and the frequency content was a lot less as well. So there's no way I'm going to be able to get back to that original signal. Here's the error signal again. Here is the spectrum of my original signal in blue and then my sync interpolated spectrum. So much less frequency content again. If we go to four, things become even more interesting. What you'll start noticing, look how smooth the red curve is. The red curve is oscillating very smoothly and it can't pick up these jagged moves that the signal had originally. If you think about it, what we're doing when we downsample it by throwing away all those high frequencies, high frequencies have the ability to change rapidly. Low frequencies don't have the ability to change rapidly. Since we've downsampled by so much and thrown away all this high frequency content, we're left with this red signal, which has no ability to change rapidly. So in here, all it can do is oscillate smoothly, whereas the original signal, which had high, higher frequency content, can oscillate rapidly. So that's one of the impacts here in downsampling. Um, by downsampling, we have four times less data, which is nice, but I am throwing away information. If you were to listen to this wave file, instead of just look at it, a lot of the kind of treble and high pitch sounds are gonna to start to get muffled and blurred because we're emphasizing all the low frequency content. There's the error signal again. Again, I'm not sure we get a lot out of this just to note that there's obvious differences between my original signal and my sync interpolated signal. Since I threw away this information, I can't get it back. And then kind of the final spectrum here, my original spectrum and then my sync interpolated spectrum only has you know quite a bit lower maximum frequencies. All right, well, that wraps up sampling with some kind of real-world music audio signals and just plays a little games with what the spectrums look like of those downsampled signals, what it looks like in the time domain, and what's going on as we use these anti-aliasing filters. In the next video, we'll look at quantization of audio signals.